What is going on, Waysanders? It is me, the Lone Vault Wanderer, and welcome back to the Fallout 1 edition of Story Explained, the series where I provide to you an in-depth explanation of the main stories of video games from start to finish. In the last episode, I explained to you the prologue of Fallout 1's main story, discussing the Great War and Fallout's vaults, with an emphasis on Vault 13, being the vault that you begin the game as the game's protagonist. In case you haven't watched the last Fallout Story Explained video, it's going to be linked in the description below, and I'll also have a card pop up on the screen right now for both mobile and desktop that you can click on. In that last story explained video, I ended it by telling you that not all is well in Vault 13, and it is you as the game's protagonist that needs to resolve the problem. And in this video, part 1 of Story Explained, I'll tell you everything you need to know about this predicament in Fallout 1's main story, replacing Vault 13's water chip. As always, the information you're hearing from today's video is sourced from the Fallout Wiki, linked in the description below. If you go on to like this video, please like, subscribe if you're new, and also leave a comment answering the following question. What is your favourite experiment that was conducted on the many vaults in the Fallout franchise? In the next episode of Fallout Story Explained, I'll be featuring one of your answers at the very start of the video, so be creative with your responses. So with all that out of the way, this is part 1 of Fallout Story Explained, The Water Chip. Fallout 1 begins with you filling the shoes of the game's main protagonist, later known as the Vault Dweller. Vault 13 is your home, an underground Fallout shelter located in Southern California, beneath Mount Whitney. However, not all is well in Vault 13. The Vault's overseer, Jacqueline, has come to you with an important issue that is affecting the very future of the Vault. But first, let me explain a bit about what an Overseer actually is. Essentially, these are the people that have been tasked by Vault Tech with being the leaders of the Vaults. I told you in the last Prologue episode that many Vaults had an underlying and oftentimes nefarious social experiment, whereby Vault inhabitants were subject to tests of some sort. More often than not, the Vault Overseers, being the leaders of the Vault, are fully aware of the true purpose of the particular Vault that they have been tasked with leading, and sometimes attempt to coordinate this purpose. It is, however, somewhat unknown whether Jacqueline actually knew of the true purpose of Vault 13's social experiment, to test how the inhabitants of the Vault would deal with prolonged isolation by closing the Vault door for 200 years, but it's probably safe to assume that he did. But nevertheless, prior to the 5th of December 2161, Jacqueline encountered something in the Vault that was even unexpected to him. Vault 13's water chip began to malfunction, and eventually it broke, beyond repair. This was a dire situation, as these water chips are absolutely crucial to all vaults that vault built. They are the main devices responsible for the filtering and recycling systems of the water purifiers in each vault, and they also monitor levels of contamination. Essentially, no water chip meant no drinking water for the inhabitants of Vault 13. Now while Vault 13 did have a supply of drinking water, it would certainly not last forever. The lives of Vault 13's people hung in the balance. The Vault desperately needed a replacement water chip to ensure that there was drinking water in the future. It is very interesting to note at this stage though, that while Vault 13 did actually order additional water chips, it was due to a shipping order mix-up that another vault, Vault 8, received this order of water chips instead. Nevertheless, Jacqueline had to improvise and do something else to address the vault's fast decreasing water supplies. So he started to send out Vault 13 dwellers into the post-apocalyptic wasteland on missions to try and find a replacement water chip. Interestingly, the Vault Dweller, the character that you play as in Fallout 1, was not actually the very first person that was sent out to find a replacement water chip. In fact, one of the first people sent out were two men known as Talius and Ed. What is noteworthy here is that when you eventually leave Vault 13, it is actually Ed's skeleton that lies just outside the Vault's protective door, which you can then loot for items. What is strange, however, is why Ed's skeleton is located just outside of the vault, as you would have expected for him to actually travel a little bit before dying. Especially because his skeleton also appears in a cell in a completely different location in Fallout 1, known as the Mariposa military base. But we can just assume that this was just a quirk of a video game. So regardless, let's just focus on Talius. Talius was tasked with the mission of finding a replacement water chip for Vault 13, but initially was unsuccessful in his travels and searches. However, Talius then heard of how a city known as Necropolis had a water pump, so he headed there with the hope of finding a functioning water chip. 
The city, however, was full of giant super mutants, and eventually, Talius was taken captive, and was taken to the aforementioned Mariposa military base. There, he was dipped into a large vat, filled with a substance known as FEV, which will be explained in full in a later episode. And as a result, he transformed into a ghoul-like super mutant. Luckily, Talius was rescued by a group known as the Followers of the Apocalypse, and soon joined them as a member. You can actually find Talius later in the game, located at the Boneyard Library. But at the end of the day, Talius abandoned his initial mission of obtaining a functioning water chip for Vault 13. This then forces Jacqueline to find someone else to find a replacement chip, and this is where you, the Vault Dweller, actually comes into the picture. And it is here where Fallout 1 actually starts. We finally got here. On the 5th of December 2161, at approximately 7.21 in the morning, Jacqueline informs you that the controller chip for Vault 13's water purification system, or the water chip for short, has broken. They can't make another one or find a workaround. As a result, Vault 13 is running out of drinking water. Water which of course is crucial to the Vault's survival. In Jacqueline's own words, you are the only hope that the Vault has to find another controller chip. Jacqueline also tells you that there is about 4 to 5 months before the Vault runs out of water, but the more precise time is about 150 days. Jacqueline then marks your map with the location of another Vault as a good starting point to try and find another water chip. He then tells you to be safe, gives you a 10mm pistol with ammunition, and a device known as the Pip-Boy 2000. PIP stands for Personal Information Processor. It is a pre-war electronic device manufactured by Robco Industries, used primarily by travelers. It holds an incredibly large amount of information, capable of keeping track of map making, mission objectives, and bookkeeping aspects. It can also transfer data to and from holodisks and data tubes, and record both sound and video footage. It monitors your health, maps the surrounding terrain using satellite uplinks and sonar imaging, has a timer and an alarm, motion sensors, and a personal log system. Equipment in hand, you then leave Vault 13 into the post-apocalyptic wastes of California to try and find a replacement water chip. But what happens after this? Well, you're just going to have to watch the next episode in this Fallout Story Explained series. Thank you so much for watching until the end. Again, if you like what you saw, please like, subscribe if you're new, and also leave a comment answering the following question. What is your favourite experiment that was conducted on the many vaults in the Fallout franchise? In the next episode of Fallout Story Explained, I'll be featuring one of your answers in the comments at the very start of the video, so definitely be creative with your responses. As soon as the next Fallout 1 Story Explained video is uploaded, I will link it in the description below and also have a card pop up on screen right now that you can click on. So until next time, this has been the Lone Vault Wanderer, please take care of yourself, and would you kindly keep fighting the good fight.